Welcome back. Uh, you're with us here on Newsroom. Now, according to Grant Thornton's report, the healthcare space has seen an increase in the number of private equity investments, while the volume of M&A activity has gone down in the year 2012. Mr. Mahadevan, a partner and leader of uh, the healthcare segment at Grant Thornton, joins us to talk about that report. Ma, thanks so much for being with us. Let me just start off with getting the broad statistics. And uh, the trend that seems to be emerging is that private equity seems to be moving up, but M&A seems to be slowing down. Why is that? Yes, I, mean, I think to understand that a little bit better, you need to see the, uh, how the sector itself is split. Um, you know, we see healthcare services, pharmaceuticals, and medical technology as three different segments within healthcare. And if you see the healthcare services segment, that's where you're seeing significant increase in the private equity interest, um, with you know three times the amount of money invested in 2012 compared to uh, two years back, and that's primarily driven by the attractive uh, growth opportunities in that segment. The fact that it's still you know considered um, sort of not that mature in India, you know, there's a lot of investment still to go in. So that's what's driving private equity in that space. Um, pharmaceutical obviously is considered a more mature uh, um, sector, you know, having seen significant investment in the past. Right. And uh, because of that, you, know, you would expect to see more consolidation, so M&A uh, sort of transactions, joint ventures and things like that. Now, one of the reasons why you're seeing M&A volumes in the sector yeah. uh, and even value come down um, or remain flat, I would say, is because, um, you know, sort of high valuation expectations typically yeah. in the industry and which, which, you would, which you see in a lot of industries in India, but specifically this because right. of some very attractive transactions historically, such as the you know, Abbott Piramal or Daiichi and Baxi sort of transactions. Uh, valuation expectations remain high, coupled with the economic climate in other parts of the world, um, you know, where people are not willing to pay that sort of money that's uh, expected here. And one must also not forget the growth prospects in that segment still in India. Right. Um, so, you know, there is a number of companies who are still thinking, why not I hold on for some more, uh, some, some, some number of years and then sell at a later point in time. So that's sort of what is driving, I would say, M&A volumes um, and value. Um, in this sector. Uh, an interesting one to um, look out though is the medical technology space, right. um, you, know, which, um, you know, which is sort of evolving as a sector. Um, not much investment has gone into it historically, but we've seen a couple of very interesting transactions recently, um, you know, investments in Trivitron and Sutures India, uh, which have sort of, uh, really increased the deal value in that sector fivefold in the last uh, three years. And uh, we, we would expect yeah. to see more of that in the coming years. Okay, another interesting trend is the fact that um, We've actually seen an in more increase in outbound activity rather than inbound. Yeah. Uh, what's also causing that? So um, I think outbound transactions have always been a key growth uh, driver for Indian companies looking to expand in this market, um, getting access to new products, getting access to new uh, geographies and markets. So that's always been important. Um, um, so whereas inbound, uh, by, because of the factors we were discussing earlier um, on valuation expectations and the overall economic climate in other parts of the world, uh, makes it a little less um, sort of, you know, attractive for them to do the transactions. One must not forget that uh, two years back we had the um, Piramal Abbott transaction, mm -hmm. which is sort of, you know, you take that out, uh, the numbers look slightly different. Right. Um, because, you know, if including that, the sort of M&A volumes came down from 6 billion plus to you know, close to 3 billion this year, mm -hmm. uh, I mean last year. Um, but you take that out, you still see a you know, marginal growth in the M&A uh, sort of you know, activity. Okay. When it's also, you know, it, is the regulatory environment, particularly when it comes to the healthcare space, uh, limiting in any way or is it conducive to uh, more activity going ahead? Yeah. So I think uh, that's an interesting question because um, 2000, uh, later part of 2011 and um, pretty much most of 2012, that was a key factor limiting investments in the space because uh, FDI in pharma was restricted in sort of uh, later part of 2011 um, because of which a number of transactions that may have happened earlier um, got bunched up and happened in the later part of 2012 or have still not happened. Yeah. So that did impact um, the investments, particularly in the pharmaceutical sector, yeah. um, for a period of time. Um, but with increasing clarity around that, you know, although the approvals are still required, there's more clarity around that process. You know, we wouldn't expect that to come in the way um, all that much in the future. So you feel, though, for the moment, uh, given by some of these uh, statistics or trends that are emerging, that uh, the, the, the its sector as such is still fairly ripe, there's still enough interest, and definitely, at least from this, we can tell private equity is flowing in pretty well. No, absolutely. I think, you know, in healthcare services and medical yeah. technology, we would say private equity uh, would continue so to be potential very, very for a lot of growth going uh, ahead. A lot of growth going ahead. Yeah, All right, absolutely. Mahadevan, thanks so much for joining us. Great Thank to you. have you with us. Uh, let's take a very quick break. Uh, when we come back, Solicitor General Groinda Nariman has resigned. We get you more details on that.